Our movement is about replacing a failed and corrupt political establishment with a new government controlled by you, the American people. The Washington establishment and the financial and media corporations that fund it exist for only one reason, to protect and enrich itself. The establishment has trillions of dollars at stake in this election. For those who control the levers of power in Washington and for the global special interest, they partner with these people that don't have your good in mind. Our campaign represents a true existential threat like they haven't seen before. This is not simply another four-year election. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. The political establishment that is trying to stop us is the same group responsible for our disastrous trade deals, massive illegal immigration, and economic and foreign policies that have bled our country dry. The political establishment has brought about the destruction of our factories and our jobs as they flee to Mexico, China, and other countries all around the world. It's a global power structure that is responsible for the economic decisions that have robbed our working class, stripped our country of its wealth, and put that money into the pockets of a handful of large corporations and political entities. This is a struggle for the survival of our nation. And this will be our last chance to save it. This election will determine whether we're a free nation or whether we have only the illusion of democracy, but are in fact controlled by a small handful of global special interests rigging the system, and our system is rigged. This is reality. You know it, they know it, I know it, and pretty much the whole world knows it. The Clinton machine is at the center of this power structure. We've seen this firsthand in the WikiLeaks documents in which Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty in order to enrich these global financial powers, her special interest friends, and her donors. Honestly, she should be locked up. The most powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political, special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda. And the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe. They will lie, 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 and then again, they will do worse than that. They will do whatever is necessary. The Clintons are criminals, remember that. This is well documented. And the establishment that protects them has engaged in a massive cover-up of widespread criminal activity at the State Department and the Clinton Foundation in order to keep the Clintons in power. They knew they would throw every lie they could at me and my family and my loved ones. They knew they would stop at nothing to try to stop me. Nevertheless, I take all of these slings and arrows gladly for you. I take them for our movement so that we can have our country back. I knew this day would arrive. It's only a question of when. And I knew the American people would rise above it and vote for the future they deserve. The only thing that can stop this corrupt machine is you. The only force strong enough to save our country is us. The only people brave enough to vote out this corrupt establishment is you, the American people. Our great civilization has come upon a moment of reckoning. I didn't need to do this, folks, believe me. I built a great company, and I had a wonderful life. 
I could have enjoyed the fruits and benefits of years of successful business deals and businesses for myself and my family. Instead of going through this absolute horror show of lies, deceptions, malicious attacks, who would have thought? I'm doing it because this country has given me so much, and I feel so strongly that it's my turn to give back to the country that I love. I'm doing this for the people and for the movement, and we will take back this country for you, and we will make America great again. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the book of Proverbs 13.20 reads, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton. And there she was, hubris-riddled Hillary Clinton and her crony crew celebrating a hard-fought, fraudulent campaign promising certain doom for the American Republic. Making it abundantly clear that this Christian nation will be transferred to a much darker power, a power where Hillary's spiritual allegiance lies, surrounding herself throughout the campaign with Hillary Clinton's spiritual base, Luciferians. I'm with her. You're also cousins with Madonna. That's true. Screenshots we've got from um, last night's Super Bowl performance by Madonna. And then uh, you can also Google image search for yourself and type in Baphomet. And of course, we see that Madonna is dressed up as Baphomet. She's sitting on the throne of Baphomet. She's got the horns. Uh, later on, she's got the hand gestures of Baphomet. And this is the idol that the American people during Super Bowl halftime show are being told to worship. So, who's Baphomet? Baphomet is an idol used by Satanists to represent the devil. Madonna, one of the whores of Hollywood, one of the biggest pop culture prostitutes on our planet, who is now promising to give every single man who votes for Hillary Clinton oral sex. Let's have the dancing grandma explain it in her own words. If you vote for Hillary Clinton, I will give you a <laughs> You have as much say as any billionaire. Or you can just cancel out your weird cousin's vote if you like. Because remember, it's not where you come from, it's what you grow into. So here's how I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. What I'm asking you is to be in this moment right now with us and fight for your future and the future of our children. If you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. Remember folks, a vote for Hillary is a vote for a decades old international child sex trafficking ring, blood sacrifices, a headlong plunge into the United Nations Agenda 2030, and if we're all lucky, World War III. But most importantly, a vote for Hillary Rodham Clinton is a vote for Hillary's personal hero, Lucifer. Now, one of the things that I have learned about Hillary Clinton is that one of her heroes, her mentors, was Saul Alinsky. And her senior thesis was about Saul Alinsky. This was someone that she greatly admired and that affected all of her philosophies subsequently. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. On the dedication page, it acknowledges Lucifer, the original radical who gained his own kingdom. Now think about that. This is a nation where our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights that come from our creator. 
So are we willing to elect someone as president who has as their role model somebody who acknowledges Lucifer? Think about Many were expecting big celebrations inside Hillary Clinton's hotel this morning, but out here the sun is about to rise on a sobering day for Democrats. Devastated, sad, sorry for the country. A sentiment that spread during those nail-biting hours in the Javits Center past 2 a.m. when Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, finally told supporters to go home. I want every person across the country who supported Hillary to know that your voices and your enthusiasm mean so much to her and to Tim and to all of us, we are so proud of you. And we are so proud of her. But few in the crowd were feeling proud of their country once it became clear Clinton would not be the 45th president. What will sadden me when this is over is the reflection I'll have to take on my neighbors, my friends, my co-workers who possibly went in the booth, closed the curtain, and voted for Donald Trump. Many expected to end this election night with a huge historic win for women. I have a two-year-old niece, and, um, and and today brought her into the uh, the, the election um, booth, and um, you know we voted for an American president to be that was happened to be a female. I think I hope in her lifetime we'll have a female president. With a Republican majority projected in the House and the Senate as well, many Democrats are now looking for what comes next for them. It's so hard to believe that the country is as divided in such a severe way, in such a severe way. Protests erupted across the Bay Area immediately after the results of the presidential election were announced. Hundreds of people took to the streets in Oakland, Berkeley, and in San Francisco. KPX 5's Sandra Osborne is live at San Francisco State University where students protested until the early morning hours. Sandra? And good morning to you, Kenny. Things obviously have quieted down a lot here, but there is still some graffiti left behind. In fact, the uh, SF State sign right behind me here, the main one you see as you're driving down 19th Avenue, has some graffiti on it. We can't show that to you because of some profane language, but it is an anti-Trump's message written uh, in orange spray paint across this sign there. I do want to show you some of the damage left behind in Oakland this morning. About 250 protesters took to the streets, marching through the downtown area. This is video of the cleanup this morning. Oakland police say they're getting reports of several businesses vandalized late last night. We found some broken windows and graffiti on a building. We're told one protester has some serious injuries after being hit by a car when the protest continued on the Highway 24. We're also told protesters attacked that car, breaking out the back window. Several fires reported in garbage cans and also in dumpsters. Now here at the college, SF State, dozens of protesters gathered at the student union. Things a lot more peaceful here with chanting protesters saying they will not be divided. They did take to the streets marching on 19th Avenue. And again, things quieted down here around 4 o'clock this morning. Those protesters all went home. So we're looking at things quiet and peaceful to start off the day. Uh, however, again, we do, do still see some graffiti left behind. So there is some cleanup left to do. Russia is ready and wants to restore full-fledged relations with the United States. I repeat, we understand that this will not be an easy path, but we are ready to do our part and do everything to return Russia-US relations to a stable and sustainable track of development. As our ally, the South Korea-US relationship has a huge impact on our national diplomacy, security, and economy, and we need to find a way to develop a close alliance with the incoming Trump administration. I hope that this choice of the American people will lead to beneficial steps being taken for the world concerning basic rights and freedoms, democracy, and developments in our region. On my and my people's behalf, I want to interpret this choice of the American people as good, and I wish them a successful future. 
Vereinigten Staaten. I would like to offer Donald Trump, the new President of the United States, close cooperation. Partnership with the U.S. is and remains a cornerstone of German policy. So there we can hear her uh, inviting uh, the U.S. For, to continue their close cooperation with Germany. But she also said that that close cooperation was basically uh, conditional on them continuing to share the values of freedom, democracy and human rights. Not exactly uh, values that the media have portrayed uh, Donald Trump to be famous for. Uh, meanwhile, much more scathing reaction from her defense minister, the German defense minister Ursula von der Leyen, who uh, as the results were coming out indicating that Trump was likely to win uh, the election, she said that it was a, a big shock. Uh, and after those results came in and the, uh, the tr Trump's win was confirmed, she said, I think Donald Trump knows that it wasn't a vote for him, but she, she called it essentially a protest vote. She said it was a vote against Washington, against the establishment. Uh, she also criticized the style in which the campaign was conducted but said, nevertheless, uh, it was a democratic vote and, quote, we need to deal with that reality, end quote. Uh, elsewhere, also reactions coming in from Rome and the head of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz, who was a little flustered, to say the least. I think we can also take a quick listen to some of their statements. In the name of Italy, in the name of Italy, I congratulate and wish him a good job, convinced as I am, and we all are, that the Italian-American friendship will continue to be strong and solid. I congratulate the newly elected President of the United States, Donald Trump. This is uh, uh, for sure a difficult moment in the relationship between the United Nations, uh, no matter, <laughs> the United States and uh, the European Union.